let's discuss the concept of a Fourier transform. It is also called commonly in stochastics, it's called the char characteristic function. Um, how do we define a Fourier transform? We take e to the i theta x, we multiply, we kind of use this type of harmonic thing, remember the sine and cosine uh, way to write it, so it's a harmonic um, kind of um, weight function where we multiply a function fx and then we integrate over the real line. Um, with the Lebesgue measure. That's the Fourier transform, how we usually define it. And that's how what is often denoted by F uh, Fourier transform at, at point theta. And theta is now some reference um, number that we used. Some might call it a frequency or normalized frequency here. It's kind of summarizing something about the function F. It's not so easy to see what it does, but it summarizes the behavior F and uh, if we collect kind of the frequency, uh, these values at different frequencies theta, so then we get kind of a fingerprint of the function and we might ask, okay, do we record the, recover the function? Under some conditions we do. <clears throat> okay, um, what has this to do with probability theory? Well, think about this, f being a probability density function. So if we have a random variable x with the probability density f, so then this would be actually the integrating with the law of this random variable x. Yeah. And then we recall that the law, the law of a random variable is a probability measure itself on the real line. So we could think of actually replacing this thing by a probability measure on the real line. And, and let's see what happens. So let's take this away. And let's replace this by our favorite probability measure on the real line. And then there's no f anymore left. So let's take away the f and let's call it um, what is left is the measure mu, so let's denote it a uh, mu hat. <clears throat> and that's it actually. This is the Fourier transform of a probability measure mu. Is it well defined? Does it look well defined? We have a measure on the real line, we want to integrate something. Can we integrate something? So then we need to know, is this something that we want to integrate, is this measurable here? It's a function from R because X is now the variable where we integrate. So we integrate with respect to X. So the input is a real number X, the output is now a complex number. C. So can we well define an integral for a complex number? Well, let x be any mu distributed random variable. That means that the law of x is equal to mu. So in that case, actually, we recognize that uh, what is going there, let's take this away. And let's write here that if X is this type of random variable, so what is this then? It's just the expectation of a random variable I theta big X. Now, is this well defined? Well, let's study. We're, we recall that x is a random variable with, uh, with law equal to mu. Is this well defined? So think about this here being a random variable z. Right, so what is z doing? We have an omega, 
some probability space, we have x, which is mapping from omega to the real line. Then we have another map, which is mapping to the complex plane. And this is the map which maps x to the e to the i theta x. Yeah. So this is measurable because we assume that x is a random variable. It's a measurable from mapping the Borel pre-images there to the um, sigma algebra f. Here we have the Borel of the real line, and here we have the Borel of the complex plane. Is this measurable? Think about taking Borel set from the complex plane and, and pre-image on the real line for this function. Now we need to remember a little bit of complex analysis, but if we do, we recognize that this is actually extremely nicely behaving function. It's, it's, um, it's the smoothest function that you can think of, especially it is a continuous function. So this function is continuous. This function is continuous here. So that's why it's also measurable. So that's why our random variable z, which is now thought that it's this composition, z is a measurable from omega to the complex plane. And that's why we are now looking at the measurable function here. Is it in L1? So is z in L1? Let's try to look at the, what's the absolute value of z and can we uh, take the expectation? Well, this function is actually, if you recall the basic formula, um, z is equal to, um, we can write it as the cosine of theta times x plus i times the sine of theta times x. And if you, if you look at the absolute value of this, so we have sine and cosine, so then actually we see that the, the absolute value of z is bounded by one, so then that's true also for the expectation. So that's true, z is in L1. And um, that's how um, we know that things are well defined. So let's maybe clean up unless you have a question here. Okay, then we will clean up this and we remember what we have there. We have something in L1 well-defined and that's our definition. Okay, let's um, clean it up a bit. So now we know how to define the Fourier transform of a probability measure. Remember, this is a prob any probability measure on the real line. And I don't write the bottle sets because they are there always. 